Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm almost here today. I will review the fifth studio album by the classic rock pop piano artist, if that's, if that's even a thing, Billy Joel, The Stranger. Uh, this album came out in 1977. For the studio album, like I said, this was a big break breakout hit for the for the artist. Because I think his first album was well, no, it was not his debut. Um, you know, Piano Man, that was like his second album, I think. You know, he had kind of like a mixed debut and then he had, you know, Piano Man, which was, you know, a decent album, but, you know, only, you know, only, uh, the only song people really love from an album is the title track, so I suppose. Um, the third was Turnstiles, which was kind of a dark horse, I believe, in his discography, and The Stranger, that is like, you know, his arguably his most popular album, it is his most acclaimed album. Uh, it's the only album that got like an 80 on uh, best ever albums and the rest, you know, got 70 or lower, so there you go. Or, you know, um, you know, it got near 80 or lower, you know, in the 70 range, so there you go. So this is definitely his best album, most people would say. Um, yeah, I don't think that's really a huge surprise for anyone, to be honest. Um, I heard tracks here and there, I heard, you know, the, I believe the title track, The Stranger, I've heard here and there, I heard Just The Way You Are, uh, Vienna, the, the kind of uh, romantic Italian, uh, Italian song, which, you know, the, the, the previous track, uh, you know, tackles pretty straight on, so there you go. Um, and I've heard She's Always A Woman, so I've heard a lot of the singles of this album. Um, this album is actually really, like, ranked highly uh, with with uh, Rolling Stone. They ranked it, uh, you know, number 70 on their 500 greatest albums of all time list. Um, yeah, and I tend to agree with that. I think that, uh, spoiler alert, I think it's like around, you know, a 70 for me as well as in uh, my favorite albums. My favorite albums, it's around the 70-ish mark. So um, that should pretty much entitle, or that should pretty much say it all what I think about this album, because, you know, it's a favorite of mine, I love Billy Joel, um, this album got 9 tracks, you know, um, 77 like I said, 42 minutes and 34 seconds, it's a pretty all around, pretty amazing album, I would say, I love the album cover as well, where it's like laying on his bed, laying on his bed with like a mask at his side, it's kind of like, creepy it's kind of ominous with some boxing gloves hanging in in uh, the other side yeah, you know just besides him so there you go I'm not sure what that arm cover is all about but I really love the kind of gray and white and black colors that this arm possesses so uh, makes it kind of mystique and interesting and intrigues you into the arm I would say uh, this arm has five singles moving out Anthony's song which is the opening song just the way you are Moving out Anthony's song again for some reason. It was re released, I don't fucking know. Only the Good Die Young and She's Always a Woman. So I actually uh, seen from an Italian, scenes from an Italian restaurant wasn't even fucking released as a single, so do whatever you want. It probably just is a fan favorite, I think. So there you go. Um, yeah, I mean, just every song on there is pretty classic. I don't really have a lot to say about it. Um, and the first track, Moving Out, Anthony's song, is just like a perfect kind of introduction to Billy Joel. You know, he's saying that, you know, he's moving out and it's dedicated to Anthony, whoever that is. The fucking needle drop, but... But, uh, yeah, I definitely think this sets the tone for the for the album pretty well. Because I think that Billy Joel's moving out or something. Or and from Anthony's perspective. And, you know, he's just moving out, going on an adventure. Uh, to The Stranger, I suppose, so it does set the tone for the album pretty well. Then we got The Stranger itself, which is probably Anthony himself, or maybe Billy Joel, I'm not sure uh, from what perspective he's singing on, but, you know, if it's not a concept, I'm literally talking out of my ass right now. But it doesn't matter, because this uh, song is glorious, uh, just everything that, everything that you want out of a Billy Joel song, great piano, great production, lovely vocals, really diverse, intricate lyrics. Uh, just everything that you want out of a Billy Joel song, The Stranger pretty much has it all, really. Uh, just just the way you are, kind of a more romantic song, kind of some horns in the back. Um, and that beautiful tone that Billy Joel set with his vocals, I really love that. 
perfectly sets up the next song, which is uh, arguably the greatest Billy Joel song ever written. S seen from an Italian restaurant. Really love the title as well. It's seven and a half minutes long. It's the epic of the album. Uh, just everything that you want out of a Billy Joel song, you know, just like I said with uh, The Stranger. But this song takes it up to another notch. You have epic piano ballads on there. You have fucking grandiose vocals. You have very romantic yet layered uh, lyrics on this track. Um, it's an amazing song. I love this song. This is arguably my all-time favorite Billy Joel song. Uh, amazing. It's nearly an epic, seven and a half minutes long, but it still it still is fucking epic. So there you go. It doesn't even matter. Great uh, closure to an amazing side one. So there you go. To an amazing album, really. Then we get Vienna, which is the opening track of side two. I think this is a very nice track to continue on because scenes was very you know romantic and just um, very Italian inspired, whereas Vienna. Or well, actually Vienna is kind of the same thing, but it's just kind of like an encore kind of song. So I do like that uh, Billy Joel kind of continues the Italian romance thing that he has going on with um, it uh, Italian restaurants. So definitely like that, that he kind of continues it, but it, he doesn't go on for too long. He just ends it with Vienna. So I really love that he uh, still makes a track with it, but you know, it doesn't go on any further than that so that is uh, pretty nice vienna is a really sweet track i, lo I love this track and then we got uh, only the good die young a very emotional kind of uh heartbreaking song uh it's, it's pretty typical not to say that it's bad because i still love it but uh, you know it, it is one of my favorite albums there you go uh only the good die young very um heartfelt song kind of reminds me of like you know that brian made tribute from uh Queen, you know, to Freddie Mercury. It kind of reminds me of that because I think it had the same title, but you know, it was like two decades after that, so there you go. Uh, nearly two decades, something like that. But uh, Only the Good Day Young is a very uh, layered, a very uh, emotional, struck kind of song. Really hit, hit home, I would say. Really hit me like a ton of bricks. So definitely a fan of this song, really like it, so there you go. Now we got She's Always a Woman. This was a very. Um, real life song i would say uh very very interesting uh kind of weird because she's always a woman to me you know it's like one of the lyrics but i don't really get it like you know she's a woman but what else would she be i don't i don't really get it but uh, it doesn't really matter because the music in the end is still beautiful uh it kind of reminds me of just the way you are again but just a bit more direct a bit more blunt i would say which is not a bad thing so uh this is kind of a preference thing it's kind of it, it, it kind of depends if you prefer a bit of a more vaguer song just the way you are also kind of direct but or if you prefer a straight on kind of song like she's always a woman it kind of prefer it kind of depends what you prefer um i i love both so i don't really care to be honest uh, but uh or i don't really mind but it, they're still amazing tracks though they're still uh, written with a lot of heart and passion and they're just great pop songs so love them then we got get it right the first time um, and I would say that these two final tracks are kind of the dark horses of the album because uh, all the all the hits already came um, you know after this so there you go so uh, get get it right the first time a very kind of um, kind of a more aggressive song I would say definitely kind of takes a bit of more changing shift in tone i would say definitely interesting to hear but i do get why it was not a single because most of these songs are very uh romantic and very just um you know uh kind of mellow inspired i would say whereas the last two tracks are a bit more bitter and a bit more like uh you know breakup songs in a way so i do i do like that you know the album do, does take a shift after this though you know there is not one note but it still can be troublesome for some people but i don't mind to be honest i, I think it's um, you know enhances it, it it kind of adds to the album i would say and then we have everybody has a dream which is a nice kind of uh closing song i really love that um the album co goes kind of out on a kind of fantasy based kind of on a vibey dreamy kind of track really love that really love the atmosphere and the tone that the song is going with 
Uh, it's the second longest song of the album, six and a half minutes long, so it is a very um, a very epic track, I would say, very melancholic, yeah, that was the word I was looking for, a very melancholic track. Uh, it's very nice and just mellow to listen to, a very just relaxing song and just very cool. really love the tone that Billy Joel is going with here, so great clone track. Overall, amazing album, I love Billy Joel, um, this is his best album, I would say. From what I've heard at least, <laughs> fucking hell. But um, I mean, I was not disappointed. Um, I love this album. It's one of my favorites, like I said. So um, yeah, I I think I don't have a lot to say after that, after this. So you know, The Strange is one of my all-time favorite albums. So it's obviously a ten out of ten. So there you go. Thank you, Stephen Young, for requesting this one. Um, although he doesn't, you know, he's not a huge Billy Joel fan, I think. But you know. He's just looking on Rolling Stone for albums for me. So thank you for that. See you in the next one. Peace.